Creating SVG cut files using Embrilliance Essentials is a very, very simple process and you can do it with just a couple of clicks. To create an SVG cut file from an applique embroidery design, you want to pull the design into Embrilliance and just put it on your screen. Go over to the Objects panel and where the plus sign is, click the plus sign to open up all the individual objects inside of the design. You are looking for the placement line for the applique. In this case, there are two pieces of applique, one for each of the leaves, but they're not sewn at the same time. They're actually sewn one after the other. So if you look at the objects within the applique, we've got batting placement, batting tack down, fabric tack down, and there is the placement line for the leaf. These are identical. This one and the yellow one are identical. So I only need one of them because I'm gonna replicate this four times in the Brother Canvas. And you can do this if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette as well. You just need to use the software or the website for your particular cutting machine to make this happen. Since this is the placement line for the leaf, let's come down here to the properties section and on the color chip, just click it and a box will pop up with two tabs, color and applique. Click the applique tab and where it says not applique, hit the drop down and go to applique position. When that populates, you'll see another box that says cutting and inflate with a default of 1.5 millimeters. And that's just fine for this particular project. All you need to do is click save and that's it. I'm gonna save it in the embroidery fall folder with the rest of the table runner files. So here's table runner leaf top and bottom left six by 10, I'm gonna click save. And you can see that it is saving as an SVG file. Once you're finished with this, you can click okay or cancel either one. Once you've finished doing that part of it, you need to go to wherever it is that you work with your cutting files. I'm gonna go to the Brother Canvas online from the main Canvas Workspace page, I'm going to click New, and that's going to give me a clean mat to work with. And across the top, there is a menu with some icons on it, and here is where you import an SVG file. So click this button. It wants to know where you want to get it from. I'm going to click on Choose File. I'm going to navigate back to the Embroidery Fall folder where I put the SVG file and I want to look for it so I can get it. If you look at this, it says Microsoft Edge and it says HTML documents. Windows machines will do that. They'll call it an HTML file when it's actually an SVG file because the SVG file format is not native to Windows computers. It doesn't know what else to do with it, so it assigns the closest thing it can think of, and it will look like an HTML document, which normally would be used as a web page or something like that, something on the internet, but that's not what this is. And so I'm gonna click on it, and I'm gonna click open, and look, when I clicked open, it came up table runner leaf top and bottom left six by 10 dot SVG. It knows that it's an SVG file. Otherwise, this piece right here would not work. You'd get an error message. I'm going to click OK. And there is my leaf. I don't need to do anything with this at all. You do not want to mess with the size of these because you need it to be exactly the size that it will fit on the placement line. I'm going to move it here just a little bit. And the only difference between all of the leaves is the direction that the little stem is facing when it is stitched out. But the shape of the leaf itself is identical on all four of them. And as you can see, that stem is not here. The stem is actually a satin stitch. So I need four of these. I can tell when I click on it and highlight it that it is 3.34 by 3.64, so a four by four square will work to cut out my leaf. With it highlighted, I'm gonna right click on it and go copy and right click and paste and right click, 
paste and right click paste. I'm going to put these in all four quadrants of the mat so that I can cut them out on four different fabrics. All I need to do now is click download and you can either download it to your PC as an FCM file or you can download it using this button to your scan and cut. So you put the mat in with the arrow for, uh, facing in. This is the SDX225. I'm going to load my mat by hitting this middle button right here. It looks like a little mat. I've got brown and kind of an olive and a gold and an orange for my leaves. I'm going to hit the button retrieve data and it wants to know where do you want to get it from. You can get it from in the machine, from the cloud, from a USB, or you might be cabled to your computer. It's in the cloud and you'll get the last design that you sent down from the cloud. And there's my leaves right there. I don't need to do anything with it at all except I am going to scan the mat and make sure that the leaves are right in the middle of the fabric. So I'm just going to hit it, this little blue button right here, it looks like a mat with a scanning bar on it. I'm going to click OK or hit that and hit start. And now the mat is being scanned. This is one of the greatest things about the scan and cut is you're never going to mess it up and not know where you need to put your design. I can pretty much see the, the leaf on the gold and I can see the leaf on the the orange fabric and I'm sure it's here I could touch these and see where the outline squares are but if I touch the wrench and you go to background and your background is dark right there this is your dark background and your light background if you touch this one and tell it okay now I can really see my leaves in all of them look at that isn't that great? You don't have to guess. It's, you just know right where it is because it lightened the background for you. I'm going to tell it OK. And now it's please select and I want to cut. And I'm going to make sure that half cut is off and I'm just going to hit start. And it says it'll take less than two minutes. Great, all done. I'm going to tell it OK and I'm going to eject my mat. Let's see how it looks. Oh, perfect. Oh, this is worth it. Oh my gosh, you guys. That's worth not having to cut that out. My poor hands. Oh my goodness. Now you want to be very careful not to stretch these and so start on an end and kind of just grab it and pull it a little bit. Don't stretch it. And then if when you're stitching it, it's a little bit uh, outside of the tack down line and you definitely want to do the tack down line even though you have heat and bond on the back of these. But if it's too far outside of the tack down line because it's stretched, then you can just trim that a little bit. But you're going to be doing micro trimming as opposed to forever cutting out all of these little intricate curves in these oak leaves. Okay, the leaves are cut and now I'm ready to go and add these to my quilt blocks.